Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can create a CC3 Plus character from a 3D mobile scan model via Headshot 2.0. There are generally two types of mobile scanning. 180 degree facial scanning can be done via a single person. However, you'll need another person to help you for a full 360 degree head scan. A 360 degree head scan will get you more detail, which is the method we're going to use in this tutorial. Let's start off by making sure that the model is facing the camera using the rotate and move tools. You may notice some minor texture issues here, which we'll discuss how to fix a bit later. You also want to ensure that the front angle of your character's face is as close to 90 degrees from the camera as possible to get the most accurate adjustments later on. Once everything is all set, ensure the model is selected and enter into the Headshot V2 panel and begin the process by clicking on Start Head Generation with Mesh Mode selected. The first step we need to go through is using the alignment markers here to define our facial features. Here the left and right cameras are synchronized by default, but you can deselect that checkbox and move the camera position freely on the right. Then click on Calibrate Camera to align your dummy on the left to the mesh position on the right. Generally you can start by clicking on Auto Detection to get your facial markers in a decent initial position. However, you may need to do manual adjustments in some cases to get more accurate placement. Use the alignment marker placement on the dummy as your reference for best results. On top of the default 24 point marker setup, you can click on the dummy to set additional alignment points to define other features like the ears and neck. On the forehead, you'll notice a darker line which defines the hairline of your model. It also defines the top border of the forehead wrinkle area. If we continue to the next step here, without using additional points to define the hairline and switch to wireframe on shaded display mode, we'll end up with a result like this, where according to the topology, a lot of the hair is also included in the forehead wrinkle area, which we want to avoid. Therefore, let's return to the previous Align Point step and add some additional markers to more accurately define this model's unique hairline. Make sure that you add them in the same sequence as you did on the dummy model. Now when we return to the Head Gen step, you'll see the forehead wrinkle area more accurately defined. For now, I'm just going to keep the present head shape we have generated and move on to the Refine Mesh step. The Refine Mesh step is where you fit the CC base mesh more closely to the facial features of the source model. You can use the CC Mesh Opacity slider to quickly compare the two meshes, and I'm going to start off by using the Smooth tool to smooth out the topography around the eyes. You can learn more about detailed modeling in our other tutorials. With the nose and other meshes, you can use Project Brush to conform the CC mesh closer to the original. However, since our source mesh has no nostril depth, it will cause the CC mesh to overlap with the original one when auto-fitting. To fix this, you can activate the smooth brush and go inside the character mesh head to smooth it from the back, which will resolve the issue. I can then use a combination of other brushes, including project and move, to get the CC nose mesh and other facial features to conform more closely to the source model. Again, it's important to use the major outlines available on the mesh topography to define where the major facial features are, like nostrils, lips, brows, chin, etc. Smoothing out the mesh can also ensure that you have a better animated result later on, as a more even topography will have less chance of mesh breakage or sharp edges. It will also look better with wrinkles in areas like the forehead. Once we're satisfied with the head mesh, we can move on to fix the funky hairstyle this guy has. The project brush is a great starter point for this, as it will immediately begin to match your generated head's mesh to the shape of the source mesh, which in this case has a bit of a raised hairstyle. In addition, you can also use the move brush to fix uneven surfaces. When doing this, it's important to check the conform to source mesh checkbox to ensure that no matter how we move these points, they will still conform to the surface of the original mesh. 
Here I'm taking advantage of this feature to define the outer edges of the front of the hair by moving the vertices into a more suitable position. If you encounter areas where the mesh is completely missing, like on the top of the head here, you can disable the Conform to Source Mesh button so that you can manually move the vertices up so it doesn't look like our model has a hole in its head. From there, you can also use the Smooth Brush once again so that he doesn't look like he has a jagged head. Again, be sure to use the CC Mesh Opacity slider liberally in order to ensure that your generated mesh is faithful to the original. Once you're satisfied with the CC mesh shape, click on Attach to Body and select a body type. Since I want to retain the full original texture, I'll choose No Texture Mask and be sure to bake my diffuse and normal textures from the source mesh using a 4K texture. Click Generate and you'll now have your complete CC3 Plus character all ready to be animated. The only thing is we can see that there are some significant texture issues that we need to adjust. We'll cover how to fix those issues in part 2 of this tutorial series. So stay tuned.